The purpose of this video is to demonstrate how the rescue pod works in a pig undergoing CPR. This device increases circulation in states of low blood pressure. In this video, we used a well-established anesthetized pig model to demonstrate the benefits of the rescue pod. As you can see on the monitor, in this study, we are evaluating the ECG, carotid blood flow with a Doppler blood flow probe in the carotid artery, the compression and decompression depth, the intrathoracic pressure using a pressure transducer placed in the trachea. We also measure the aortic blood pressure with a blood pressure transducer in the aorta, intracranial pressure through a bolt, ICP, and right atrial pressure shown at the bottom of the screen. In the baseline state, the pig is in sinus rhythm. Intrathoracic pressure is measured in the trachea. Here, a positive pressure breath is delivered, and you can see the rise in the endotracheal pressure to 10 millimeters of mercury. The aortic pressure varies, as does the right atrial pressure, with respiratory variation. Prior to inducing ventricular fibrillation, the pig's aortic pressure is about 85 millimeters of mercury, and the right atrial pressure varies with each contraction. In the baseline state, end tidal CO2 is maintained at around 42 millimeters of mercury, and oxygen saturation on room air is 97%. Carotid artery blood flow, shown here, is approximately 250 milliliters per minute. We will now prepare to induce ventricular fibrillation electrically by stimulating the right ventricle. As you see now, the pig is now in ventricular fibrillation. Changes in blood pressure occur immediately with a decrease in aortic blood pressure. In this study, the pig will stay in ventricular fibrillation in an untreated form for a total of six minutes. Just prior to beginning compressions, two breaths are delivered. And then, using an automated compression device, which compresses the chest just like manual CPR, compressions are performed at 100 times per minute, and ventilations are performed at one breath for every 12 compressions. We compress the chest one and a half inches. After one minute of CPR, you can see the pig is still in ventricular fibrillation and that the aortic pressure is only about 40 millimeters of mercury with a small coronary perfusion pressure. We'll focus now, five minutes after beginning CPR, on what happens to the aortic pressure, including the coronary perfusion pressure, and the right atrial pressure, and you see here as well the intracranial pressure. The coronary perfusion pressure is the difference between the aortic and right atrial pressure. During standard CPR in this pig, it's only 15 millimeters of mercury. 20 millimeters of mercury or greater are needed for survival, both in pigs and in people. The cerebral perfusion pressure is the difference between the aortic and intracranial pressures. During compression, it's 22 millimeters of mercury, and with decompression, it's five millimeters of mercury. The intrathoracic pressure does not vary very much during CPR. You can see that the vacuum created during the decompression phase of CPR here is less than two millimeters of mercury. End tidal CO2 during standard CPR in this pig was 29 millimeters of mercury. And carotid blood flow was dramatically decreased to approximately 60 millimeters of mercury. The rescue pod is added to the endotracheal tube. First remove the tab that controls the light switch, activate the light switch, and then attach the rescue pod to the endotracheal tube and the resuscitator bag. The timing lights help prevent hyperventilation. The bag is squeezed after each light flash. The lights flash at 10 times per minute per American Heart Association guidelines. The pig is still getting CPR, but now note that the intrathoracic pressure with the rescue pod is minus five millimeters of mercury. It went from approximately minus one to minus five millimeters of mercury. The vacuum created is the critical element that helps to provide venous return and increased circulation in pigs and people being treated with a rescue pod. With the rescue pod in place after four minutes of CPR, the aortic pressures are now 70 millimeters of mercury with a diastolic blood pressure of about 30. Coronary perfusion pressure has increased from 15 to 25 millimeters of mercury. Note how low the right atrial pressure is now compared to without the rescue pod. With the rescue pod, the cerebral perfusion pressure during the compression phase is increased to 36 millimeters of mercury, and 
during the decompression phase is 15 millimeters of mercury. End tidal CO2 is increased from around 30 to 44 millimeters of mercury with the rescue pod. And carotid artery blood flow is nearly doubled to 100 milliliters per minute. Let's summarize now the hemodynamic findings associated with the addition of the rescue pod during CPR in this pig study. Coronary perfusion pressures increased from 15 to 25 millimeters of mercury. Cerebral perfusion pressures during the compression phase increased from 22 to 36 millimeters of mercury. And during the decompression phase, cerebral perfusion pressure increased from 5 to 15 millimeters of mercury. End tidal CO2, an indicator of cardiac output, increased from approximately 30 to 44 millimeters of mercury. When ventilated with room air, oxygen saturation levels decrease over time. Previous studies have shown that when supplemental oxygen is used with the rescue pod, oxygen saturation levels remain within normal limits. The intrathoracic vacuum decreased from minus 1 to minus 5 millimeters of mercury with the rescue pod. Finally, carotid artery blood flow increased from 60 to nearly 100 milliliters per minute. At this point in the procedure, after five minutes of CPR with a rescue pod, we attempt to defibrillate the pig. Following a single shock, there is an immediate return of spontaneous circulation. It's important at this point in time to remember to remove the rescue pod when not performing CPR. We hope that today's video has shown you the benefits of the rescue pod. The rescue pod increases blood flow to the vital organs. It works in all heart rhythms. The rescue pod increases the chances for survival. And it's very simple to use.